Kyle to big man Hankin, 1-0. However, with only five minutes remaining, Chester equalised. A superb ball split the home defence wide open for Rimmer to score a great goal and spoil the party for the new boss. I'm very, very disappointed, not just for myself, uh, the fans, but for the players. The players have worked tremendously hard and they're very disappointed in the dressing room. But as I said, uh, before today's game, I set myself a top. Uh, so we're still on a, you know, we can still do it if we get a result Tuesday night. That was a very costly goal for Darlington, with Chester one of the teams they need to catch. The Quakers are still anchored on the bottom, and they simply cannot afford to fall any further behind. It's a tough baptism for the new boss. Life's been getting hard at the Victoria ground lately, and visitors Swansea didn't make it any easier for Alan Murray's men. This long throw caused poor problems, and John Ford's goal-bound shot brought the best out of Hodge. When Paul Baker escaped wide, his cross was helped on by Paul Olsen to record signing Lenny John Rose. The dream debut denied by Roger Freestone. They went close again when Baker's early pass released Olsen, but although his first time lob beat goalkeeper Freestone, it couldn't beat the woodwork. In the dying minute, Swansea broke out with a high ball down the middle and some... But the Teesiders are still the underdogs. Middlesbrough have been chasing shadows in cup competitions for years, but tonight they could land the catch of the season thanks to Lenny Lawrence. The manager has worked miracles since he arrived at Ayrson Park and confidence amongst the players is sky high. But the boss knows they'll all have to produce the goods against one of the best sides in England if the Borough are to make it to their first major Wembley Cup final. If we're at our best, and everything I say makes the assumption that the team and our individuals are as good as they were last week. Now, if we're not, we get beat. Now, if we are, there are two or three considerations which might help us. One of which is the pitch doesn't really suit Manchester United's style of play. Mark Hughes is suspended and any team in the world would miss him. And I think that our team, our players, tend to raise themselves in front of uh, a big crowd and a big atmosphere. That's been the experience so far. And it wasn't Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup, and hopefully we can do the same. But all that is academic, unless we're absolutely spot on. Full-back Curtis Fleming is on standby to replace Gary Parkinson if he fails a fitness test. And Willie Falconer, who hasn't started a game since September the 24th, will be one of the substitutes. Meanwhile, just 24 hours after Sunderland shocked Chelsea in the FA Cup, Kevin Keegan's Newcastle positively stunned Cambridge in the league. Top scorer Gavin Peacock ran on to Mick Quinn's flick and the Magpies went in front. It was just what the boss ordered after Saturday's disaster against Brighton. David Kelly's 100th league goal from a narrow angle puts Newcastle right back on the survival course. Darlington were already two goals down when they staged a second half revival at home to Reading. Substitute John Borthwick headed home, the first from Andy Toman's corner. Seven minutes later, the Quakers' pressure brought an equaliser. Mitch Cook's free kick was easy meet for record by Nick Cusack. 2-2 the score. But the brave comeback, though, was killed off in a blizzard five minutes from time. Two goals by Craig Maskell gave him a hat-trick and keeps Darlington rock bottom. Well, we've had secret... Castle United manager Kevin Keegan is back in the region after one of the most remarkable episodes in the already turbulent history of the football club. Thousands of football fans here in the region and around the country were kept guessing over the weekend after Keegan's apparent walkout following Saturday's home win. Peace now seems to have been restored, but for how long? Roger Thames has been following events. St James Park was in a state of shock on Saturday night after Kevin Keegan sprinted out of the ground. The United chairman faced the press, declared the board was unified, but was amazed when asked, was Keegan still the manager? Yes, as far, yeah, as, far yeah. as I'm aware. Yeah. Is there any doubt that he might not be? No, not in my mind. Has there been any doubt in the last 48 hours? No, not in my mind. He's never said anything to me about uh, not being the manager. Are you to be here Monday morning? Well, I think, well, yes, I would expect so. And so is, no, nobody said anything to me to the reverse. Thank you. It took till 7 o'clock last night before Keegan came out of his Hampshire home and put United fans out of their misery. He was coming back. The only thing I've ever said is I wanted what I was promised when I took the job. And I said that last week. And that there was money there for players. And... I think that's essential, not, not just for the present time at Newcastle United, but to plan for the future. To finalise, there's no doubt in my mind that I can work with Sir John Hall and the board of directors, who along with everyone else at the club have been under tremendous pressure because of the club's present financial position. Back at St James today, a moment of light relief when Jack Charlton turned up out of the blue. Surely not.
But as the cameras flashed, Big Jack grinned. He was here to see the physio. More serious about yesterday's events. How close was he to walking out completely? Do you think? Well, as close as he can ever get, I would suppose. But um, let's not look at the dark side of it now. Let's look at the bright side. We're back, and let's hope we've come, we've, we've come here to do a job, and that's to stay in the second division. I'm sure we can do it. When Sir John Hall finally emerged this afternoon after five hours of board meetings, he insisted the cash crisis was at the heart of the problems between the chairman and the manager. But you've all got to understand the financial problems at this club. It's still on the verge of bankruptcy. Don't forget that. You all seem to search for the story, forgetting about what's the state this club's in. You know, the, myself and the directors are committing themselves to the rescue of the club. And Kevin has also come with himself and his family, and we're both going forward together to do that. And, uh, and hopefully... Probably only Newcastle could produce a weekend of trauma out of one of their best results of the season. David Kelly put United on their way against promotion rival Swindon. Whatever might have been going through Keegan's mind as he sat on the bench must all have disappeared when Glenn Hoddle's team equalised, David Mitchell finding a way through to goal. The boss might have felt like staying to celebrate when Gavin Peacock put the Magpies back into flight with his 16th of the season. It certainly should have been party time when United made it 3-1. Kelly setting up Mickey Quinn to announce that he's back. The rest of the day will go down in history. Now the chairman will want to make sure he gets his money's worth. I'm putting in a hell of a lot of money into this situation now so we can buy players in advance of the rescue plan. That shows my commitment and I've got the board fully behind me today. There's no argument about that. The differences have gone. And I'm going to say to the fans out there, we've got a tremendous future together. Two women have died after a road accident near Sedgefield in County Durham. Two other people were injured when a car and a lorry crashed. It happened. Borough's top scorer turned provider for his frontline partner on Saturday. Paul Wilkinson's cross reaches the far post, and Bernie Slaven arrives right on cue to put them in front. Wilco set up the second in typical style after good work from John Hendry. And nobody finishes chances like this one better than Bernie. Hendry tried to steal Slaven's glory, though, with a cracking goal, not unlike Stuart Ripley's cup winner against Peterborough. But there was only going to be one man of the match. When Bernie goes crashing down in the box, guess who takes the penalty? Even a late challenge by the keeper doesn't stop him getting a hat-trick. He's now found the net 18 times this season. Meanwhile, Sunderland are holidaying in Scotland at the moment, trying to forget all about their nightmare performance against Bristol City. Andrew Cole headed them in front at Roger Park. Dennis Smith plotted his old side's downfall with ease. His inside information led to the Sunderland defence being ripped apart. Wayne Allison rounded Norman for the second. Then he added the third. The back four were caught out again, and Jackie Jakinowski crossed it into Allison's path. They were strolling home by now, and Bristol shut up shop in the second half, but there was no stopping Brian Atkinson's cracking consolation. It flew into the top corner to slightly lift the gloom, but they'll have to do better in the weeks to come. Newcastle's kick-off at Grimsby was delayed, but not long enough, just 52 seconds gone, and Clive Mendonca turns Kevin Scott. It comes to Sean Cunnington, and he smacked it past Tommy Wright. Not a lot he could do about that one, but his opposite number will be kicking himself about the equaliser, too many steps for Paul Rees means an indirect free kick. A slight touch from Brock and Kevin Sheedy fires it past the entire Grimsby side. Newcastle, though, disappointed not to get all three points when a Quinn special was disallowed. The depression's getting deeper in Darlington. They slumped to another home defeat against Preston. It's on Weir side, a firm advertises Cup semi-final goals roundup. More than 30,000 fans saw just one goal yesterday. Newcastle's Kevin Sheedy picked out David Kelly. Paul Hardiman couldn't keep the ball out, and Sunderland slid nearer the relegation zone. United's first derby win since January 85. It could have been more clear-cut, but for some rather questionable refereeing. Mickey Quinn was convinced he'd scored, even though Anton Rogan hooked the ball away. But as Gavin Peacock's cross comes over, just look at where Rogan is standing as he clears. Fortunately, they had no bearing on the points. Middlesbrough didn't need any dodgy decisions to take a valuable point from manager Lenny Lawrence's old club, Charlton. 
The Borough had Stephen Pears. Only six days after an operation on a fractured cheekbone, the keeper proved the hero again in a goalless draw.